Hey there guys, welcome back to another beginner's video. We're on a stocked version of Fedora in a VM. And, uh, well, what we're going to be doing today, of course you've seen the title, is a beginner's guide to installing Steam, Proton Up QT, and getting everything and up and running just for you. And the reason we're doing this is so new users can jump right into gaming on Linux with little to no issue. This has nothing to do with NVIDIA. This has nothing to do with AMD. It will be handled in another video on certain things you need to know about both, okay? So first we're gonna open up the terminal. It's not scary, don't worry. You need to make sure that you run this command first to make sure that you're completely up to date, okay? Because you wanna pull all the latest fixes down. So Fedora 40, 39, are not buggy if you're using anything older like 38 uh, upgrade for the love of god please this also counts for arch linux as well i'll also put the arch linux command in the terminal so you know how to do things so for arch linux to update to the newest it's this right here okay makes it nice and easy i'm not going to be covering ubuntu in this video or any debian based stuff it's not for you You'll have to figure out a way to do that on your own. I don't support those distros. I find that it's just, it doesn't help people learn Linux to use those. It's not a good gateway for beginners because you're using an already outdated system and that can lead to other issues down the road. So it's best to do something a little more modern. So let's start with installing Steam. So sudo dnf in. In is a short for install. And then we do Steam like this and we enter our password and once we do this it will pull everything up these are the dependencies that are needed to run steam and there's not really that many they're not really that big and without them you can't really run steam at all okay we're gonna hit yes by the way this applies to any distro any uh desktop environment so you'll do the same thing on kde or your hypervisor uh, not your hypervisor hyperlind Sway i3, same command. Okay. So once this is done installing, you'll notice it's going stupid fast. That's because of the way I have things installed and optimized. And it should not take very long to finish. It looks to be done. We're going to type clear. And for you people on Arch Linux, it's sudo pacman dash capital S Steam. If you're using Fedora, you don't need to run this. If you try to do this on Fedora, Pac-Man's not found. Don't install Pac-Man. Don't, because then you'll have to deal with mirrors, and then you'll have to set up a whole bunch of weird stuff. It's not worth it. All right, now that we have Steam installed, we're going to need to open it for the first time, okay? And to do that, you click this button up here, because this is a stock version of GNOME. You don't actually have to click it. You can just... Actually, you do, but... Usually, if you pull to the corner, there's a hot spot that will open it for you. Click this button here. Open up Steam. We're actually going to pull it down to the bar. We're going to pull our settings over here, and we're going to unpin this because we don't need it. We are going to pull the terminal in because I want to. I want you guys to have a good bar ready to go. It's best to pull the essentials down, right? All right, open up Steam. It's going to do the Steam setup. It's going to update Steam runtime and variables. Let this do its thing, okay? It'll happen pretty quick. Then it's going to update Steam to the newest version. You'd think it'd pull it down, but no, of course it doesn't. So this is Steam as a whole, the application. Installing Steam is like 3 megabytes. Downloading full Steam is around 465 megabytes because it's like an OS in itself. It's using what's called CEF. It's a, a slimmed down version, if you can call that, of Chrome. And that in itself is weird. Once this is finished, it will update, it will extract the packages. You know how Steam works, hopefully. All right, updating the Steam runtime, good. Reconfiguring, it'll unpack. I'm gonna run through this whole thing with you. We're not pausing or doing anything silly unless I have to cough. And we should be good to go. And look, it's 5 a.m. So this is a you thing. Go ahead and pretty much log into your Steam. 
hopefully you have a password and stuff ready to go. For me, I usually use the app because having extra protection and security matters. So there we go. We're all logged in and ready to go. Oh, look at that. I can stream into my VM. Nice. All right. So now that we're in, first thing we're going to do is we're going to head to Steam, Settings. We're going to go to Downloads. I'm going to choose the nearest place to me. Believe me, it's not Canada. Uh, the newest, the nearest place to me that has the fastest internet is New York. We're going to hit Restart later. I'm going to turn off display download rates in bits per second because that's archaic. And I'm also going to go down and turn this off. Now, some games, if they're super stuttery and have a lot of issues, turn this back on. But if you have a 5000 series AMD GPU or a 1000 series NVIDIA GPU or newer, you won't need this because it will super compile shaders while you're playing the game. All right. All right. On to the next one. This is your compatibility. This allows you to enable the ability to play Windows games using Proton Experimental or another Proton on Linux. We need to turn this on, okay? Installing this has created a bunch of folders, and I'm going to go explain those folders here right now for you, okay? But click Steam, and we're going to exit. It's going to shut down Steam because we need to restart it anyway. So now we need to have another talk. So by default, dark mode's not on. You can click this up here in GNOME and turn dark style on. We're going to hit Control H to show hidden folders. And there's a Steam folder right here, okay? The dot Steam folder, which means it's hidden. We're going to go in here, into Steam again. We're going to go down to the bottom. We're going to find a file, if I can see it. Uh... It does not exist. So we're going to have to make it. By default, there's a bug in Steam that uh, that means your download speeds will be slower. So what we need to do is I need to edit a certain file to get that to not be slow. Okay? All right. So there's a few ways that we can make this happen. So when you right click, you can see that you can't really do anything. There's no way to make a new text file or anything like that, okay? What we can do is we can copy this and we can paste this. Then we can open with a text editor and we're going to control A and delete everything in here, okay? I know it seems a bit weird. We're going to start by typing an at. We're going to do N. Then we're going to do client downloads or download, sorry, enable, and it's HTTP, and is there an S? Nope, there is not. There's a 2, and it's going to be platform, Linux, and we're going to put a 0. So that's the first one we're going to add. The second one is another at, and F, download <laughs> rate I always put an S at the end because I'm so used to Linux and then we want to do improvement I probably spelled that wrong but I did I yeah I did look at that ah words to add another connection 1.0 so it adds another connection allow you to download things quicker I wonder I'm gonna do something silly no I'm not gonna do anything silly so next we're gonna do save as okay and this is where we rename this thing it's gonna be steam underscore dev dot cfg so when we hit save You'll see that we have uh, a new thing here, wherever it put it. I can't really see it because my eyes are sometimes. Uh, there it is. So steam underscore dev dot CFG. We are going to make sure that it says CFG. And 
by doing this, by making this, we make our Steam downloads as fast as possible. So now when we open up Steam again, and I will demonstrate download speed here to make sure that it is quick, okay? Hopefully, if Steam ever decides to open up, it's because we're on a VM that it's probably like chugging. All right, we're gonna go library. Uh, what is the smallest game that I have that we can just demonstrate this with? Sons of the Forest, go ahead. I made a 100 gig VM so we can start this download. And it's gonna reserve us some space. And hopefully we can get up past 15 megabytes a second. I'm not getting my hopes up, but as long as it doesn't stick around 10, we're usually good. Come on, 12, 15, 17. The more cores you have, the more you're able to keep, um, how do I say this, uh, a stable connection because it requires quite a few resources and cores to be able to download things. So again, the connection's not that bad. If I decided to give this VM eight gigs or eight cores, my bad, it would perform a little better and it would download a little better. But right now this is what we have. And I could definitely go edit the VM to make sure that happens, but I, uh, I don't really want to. But it did manage to go to 18 megabytes a second, which is not bad. Okay, I decided to give it eight cores right there, see? So, I don't know. It seems to be a little less stressed, but it's still pegging all the cores. And on my host system, it's also pegging these cores. So, uh, this game does not like to download very quick. So, it's just not a me thing. All right, manage, uninstall, goodbye. Uh, let's try another example. Alien Isolations likes to download super quick. Let's try that. I just want to show you that the performance, the download speed's actually really good, but it's hard to do so. I have this running on my main machine where it actually does download stupid quick. I mean, the max speed I've had is 215 megabytes a second, which is absolutely crazy. All right, we're dragging on a little bit too long here. So we have enabled compatibility to run Windows games on Steam, which is really, really good. And it definitely helps or a lot of things, you know, so you can get into your gaming. But now we need a custom Proton installer. <laughs> Proton up QT. So this is the application right here. It's going to install via Flathub and that's completely fine. Flat packs are really good. They do have some issues depending on applications. But for ones like this, they're really good. All right. It will be done installing here in a sec. You can do it. Anyway, as I said, I will leave um, what you need to put in your steam underscore dev dot config in the description below. So you can just copy and paste it in instead of typing it out. Okay. Because knowing me, I probably made an error somewhere. I'm not seeing one, but... It is what it is. So this is Proton up QT. We need to hit add version and it's going to install Proton 9.4 GE. And we want this specific one because it has fixes for games that the original Proton does not have. And uh, that's really, really useful. So now that it's installed and extracted, we can exit out of the application. And we can open up Steam again. Yes, yes. One second. Let me just do that. And we're going to exit out of Steam completely. Because we do have to restart it now that a new Proton's installed. I'm going to open this up. And it's going to take a second to open. Or it's not going to open at all. Because I think I clicked it too quick. We're going to go to Steam. We're going to go to compatibility and we're going to set this to Proton GE. 
we're going to hit restart. And once this is finished, you're good to go. You should be able to do whatever you need to on Steam. You should be able to play whatever you need to. Um, minor word of caution, some EAC games will not work. Some will. There's a list somewhere. I'm pretty sure it's out of date, but if it's not, then, you know, you can follow it. If I find it, it will be in the description. If I don't, it won't, and so on, okay? Anyway, you have your Steam up and running on Arch Linux or Fedora. You have everything you need. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, if it helped you, if you were a beginner and this answered some of your questions, leave a comment telling me so. Hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be doing more videos like this to help new Linux users get everything up and running. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.